we are cooking, we're going, and I want to start out this morning by saying, do you know God loves you? I mean, he loves you more than anyone else or anything else. The Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And because of that, he sent Jesus to the earth, born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life and was crucified on the cross, died, was buried, and rose again on the third day for the purpose of paying our sin debt. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's a debt that needs to be paid. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Jesus paid that debt, rose from the dead, and that payment is available to us to be applied to our account by simply calling upon his name because Romans 10 9 says if you say with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you'll be saved from the punishment of sin it says in Romans 10 13 for whoever for everyone excuse me who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved from the punishment of sin so I want to thank everybody who's out there on social media spreading all my videos around. You are helping me get the message of the kingdom out there, and I appreciate that. And a shout out to Lee in town who put it on our town page and linked up our website so everyone could find it. I appreciate you all spreading the word of God. Because that's why we get a website, that's why I do these messages, that's why I put them online. So people will know that God loves them. And God only has good things for them. But our sin has separated us from God. And if we will simply make Jesus the Lord of our life and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So, appreciate it all. Keep spreading the word. So, I want to get back to where we were talking about, and I got it up there, developing our soul to be spiritual. We want to become spiritual beings. We don't want to be intellectualized religious beings where we're simply educated in a religious format like we get educated in school in a natural format, but actually be spiritual where our spirit and our soul can be, be able to engage with God. And we talked about the first principle in developing our soul is being people of the Word. And just... A quick recap, we, we need to read the Word. But not only read the Word, then we want to read it out loud as we read it. Because you believe what you say. So you want to read it out loud, and then you want to personalize it, interject yourself into the Word. And I believe one of the scriptures I gave you was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I'll tell you what, I've had a couple rough days. I, I've been going like 6 in the morning until almost midnight a couple days, and I'm like... I thought to myself, how do these presidential candidates do it? I I'm getting wiped out here, going flat out, like two days in a row. I just wanted to sit down and I'm like, I need a break. I just want to like do nothing for a few, I'll tell you, I'm sleeping real good. But, you know, how do people do this? And then, I, then it dawned on me, you know what, Jim, you got to start doing what you preach. So I started saying, Lord, you will strengthen me. My God, you, Jesus, will strengthen me. So we want to do that. We want to personalize the Word of God. Speak it out loud. Personalize it. And then the second principle I want to bring up, I want to start to share with you today, and, and we're going to develop this principle a little slowly like we did the last one, is we need to learn how to meditate upon the Word. So I've got some definitions here I want to read to you. The strong definition on the word meditate is this. It means to murmur in pleasure or anger. Have you ever been in a discussion with someone that kind of got anger? They got upset with you and they kind of under their breath. You're like, you talking to me? I can't hear you. Speak up. Are you talking to me? You know, you're just kind of murmuring under your breath. That's the definition of meditation. It says, by implication, to ponder, imagine, meditate, mourn, utter, 
roar, speak, study, talk, utter. So that's pretty comprehensive when we're going to kind of look at some of these aspects as we go. The Brown Driver Briggs Lexicon puts it this way, moan, growl. You ever have someone growl at you? Moan. Thank you, honey. Probably should put my glasses on, maybe. Moan, growl, utter, speak, muse. Is that how you say it? Muse? Muse. Thank you. And think about, yeah, we're going to touch on that. I can't say this other one, Hebrew and, and Chaldee lexicon, means to murmur, to mutter, to growl as a lion over its prey. How many ever thought that's a way of meditating? You know, like a lion when it has its prey and if something tries to come and get it, it starts growling at it. It says to roar. Notice this one. It says a low thunder. We've had some thunderstorms lately. Do you think that's a way of meditating? And then it says muttering. We know people that mutter, don't they? Mutter under their breath, just go around kind of like talking to themselves. The dictionary definition, if you look it up in the dictionary, it means to engage in contemplation. This is what we typically think meditation is. To engage in contemplation or reflection. To focus one's thoughts on, reflect on, or ponder over. To plan or uh, project in the mind. So the foundational verse is many verses on meditation. We were playing some up on the screen earlier. Foundational verse I want to look at first is going to be Joshua 1.8, very well-known verse. It says, this book of the law must not leave your mouth. This is a new life version. Think about it day and night. So you may be careful to do all that is written in it then all will go well with you. You will receive many good things. Now I want to remind us of something. I, I touch on this from time to time, and I'm just going to touch on it again. There are protocols in the spirit realm that we must follow in order to receive the benefit of the Word of God. So here's a layout of protocol concerning meditation. It's talking about this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth means you're supposed to be speaking it. That was one of the terms that we use, right? To speak. But not only that, you're supposed to think about it. Not every now and then, but it says day and night. And that you may be carefully do it. See, if you do this piece and you do this piece and maybe this piece over here, but you miss the two in the middle, you're not going to get the results that it says. So many people will tell me, well, I did that and it didn't work. No, you didn't do that. Because what you're basically doing is saying God's a liar. His word is not true. No, you did not work it properly because we do not follow spiritual protocols. We want to do it our own way. Man thinks he has a better way of doing things that God tells him to do. That's always been man's problem. It's called rebellion disobedience. It doesn't even have to be purposeful. There are just people that you instruct on how to do something. I can, I'm amazed at how many people that I've tried to help through financial problems. People have financial issues. You know why? You won't follow good budgeting principles. Oh no, I got my way of doing it. Yes, you do. That's why you're in the mess you're in. Because you're doing it your way. Guess what? I used to do that. I've been there and done that. Until I decided to follow good biblical principles on financial management, which also included budgeting principles. And now I told you we're debt free with a few pennies in the bank. We owe no man nothing but to love him. Because we've been following the principles. Just didn't follow the principles for a couple weeks and say, oh, this don't work. Or even a couple months. I've been doing them for decades now. That's the problem with people. They will not follow the protocol. So please, get it in here. Lord, help me to understand the protocols to see your word come to pass in my life. 
So one of them is this principle of meditating. So what is the basis for your meditation? What should you be meditating upon? Now catch this revelation. Don't meditate on what you see. Don't meditate on it. That's why when I was told that some of these things that have been posted online, I don't meditate on them. I don't even read them. I just scroll through and said, oh, there's another one. Let me look. And oh, yeah. One guy was awesome. He says, well, now I'm even going to vote for him more if that's the case. But cool. If that's what he believes, I'm all in with him. But I don't, I don't meditate on what I see. Because all of this is a distraction. Remember the word of God, I believe it's Colossians 1, says think on the things that are above, not the things that are below. That's why I tell you we don't watch the news. Because every time we put it on, we've put it on a little bit lately, but I mean the world has must have ended 55 times in the past week. The way they convey things that go on, it's like wow, really? No, it's honestly not that bad. I just find it funny because when I'm watching, I'm wa listening to the choice of words. And I'll point them out to Rob and I'll say, that was a very interesting word they used. Words have meanings. And they know that. And they use the most dramatic word just to share a simple story. So don't meditate on what you see, but the next one is don't meditate on what you hear. You're going to hear all kinds of junk. Don't meditate on it. That's why when you go to the doctors, Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? I will believe God's word. That's why the foundation of your meditation must be God's word, not what people have to say. That got some people riled up. I had a Bible up there and a meme that I've probably posted 20 times over many years, said the Word of God is the final authority. Your opinions and thoughts don't matter. Man, that stirred up a bee's nest. That's what I'm getting at. What we meditate on, what we see and what we hear has to be the Word of God if we want to see the principles of the Word of God come to pass in our life. That has to be the foundation upon which we meditate on. So don't meditate on what you see. Don't meditate on what you hear. Don't meditate upon your own thoughts. You're going to get weird thoughts come through your mind. I've had a few lately because I've had so many voices bapping in my ears. And all of a sudden, this thought comes through. And I'll share it with my wife and she'll say, ah, you might not want to do that. And I'll say, thank you, honey. Don't meditate on your own thoughts. Certainly don't meditate on your own feelings. Feelings are fickle. Feelings change. And that's part of our problem in society today. We're following feelings and we're making decisions based on feelings, not understanding in 30 minutes those feelings can change. What I call it is knee-jerk reactions. I just give you an example. We had a couple bad accidents in town and people wanted to put rumble strips in and put all kinds of stuff in and you know, we got to get rid of these two passing lanes. There's a passing lane down our end of town, another passing lane. We got to do all this. All this stuff is is causing all these accidents. So what we do? We got the police chief to come in and he did an in-depth data analysis for over a year. And you know what the number one cause in accidents on Route 4 in our town is distracted drivers, over 50%. We could cut the accident rate down by 50% just on our strip in Northwood if people would pay attention to what they're doing and get off their stupid phones. No, we don't need to put in these strips and we don't need to do these other things. Just pay attention to what you're doing, people. See, it's a knee-jerk reaction. People are responding to their feelings. And I get it, it was horrible, the death we had of the person in town. 
But again, don't meditate. The foundation of your meditation must be the Word of God because the Word of God is truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. So again, this is how mere religious human beings function. They focus upon the distractions of this natural realm. A spirit being focuses upon the Word. Thus, our first principle on how to develop our soul to be spiritual was get in the Word constantly. Every day, there's no reason why we can't get in the Word every day by some means. You drive to work in the morning, put it on. We all got Bible apps. You can just put it on and listen. I go to the gym, got my little headphones on, I'm doing my thing, and it's playing. There's no excuse. We, I got a channel in the house that's just, I forget the name of it. It's the Word of God. Somebody just reading the Word of God, random scriptures. I'll be doing stuff and I just put it on the TV. I certainly don't need the stupid news playing on the TV while I'm trying to do stuff. No, the Word of God. Fill in my head, fill in, create an atmosphere in the house. There's really no excuse not to get into the Word. It's not like the old days where the only way you got in it is you actually had to sit down and open a book. There's so many different ways to get into it now. You've got to get into the Word of God constantly, however that works for you, because that must be the foundation of our meditation. So, let me give you a couple levels. I put here levels, dimensions of meditation. How do we actually meditate? And again, the first one is right there in our foundational text. I put it there. Think about it day and night. Think about it day and night. What does that mean? The first thing you get up in the morning, think about it. I got up this morning with a scripture verse on my mind. I had to get up and go read what it was. First thing in the morning, think about the word. Last thing at night. You know what people do when they go to bed? They start thinking about their day. They start thinking about tomorrow. They got to start thinking about all they got to do the next day. And their mind's going like this. And it's like, oh, I wonder why I can't fall asleep. Because you're not, the, the word of God is not the basis of your meditation. You're not meditating on the scripture that says that he'll give his children sweet sleep. You want sleep, sweet sleep? Meditate on the word that says you'll have sweet sleep. But you don't. You think about other things. So that's what I talked about earlier. You can't break protocol and expect to get the results that the word of God says you ought to be getting. You have to follow the word of God. So again, think about it day and night. First thing on your mind in the morning. I like what Richard says. He wakes up and says, thank you. It can be that simple. It's on his mind, first thing. You make it work for you. I'm not, I'm not saying you've got to sit there before your eyes open, get your Bible out, read it or whatever. I'm not saying that. Whatever works for you. But make sure when you get up, you're thinking about him. When you go to bed, you're meditating on him or whatever he's put on your heart that day. Psalms 1, 1 and 2 says this, Happy is the man who does not walk in the way of sin, in the way sinful men tell him to. Again, this is a New Life version. Don't walk in the way sinful men tell you to. Thank you, Jesus. That was for me. I got a lot of this going on. Not just on this ear, both ears. Or stand in the path of sinners. Or sit with those who laugh at the truth. Why would you hang out with people that mock other believers? Make jokes about that? Why? He says, don't do that. He says, but he finds joy in the law of the Lord. He finds joy in the law of the Lord. And thinks about the law day and night. Let me give you an example. I was out knocking doors yesterday, had someone with me who's kind of like, how can I put it nicely? I mean, it's not bad, but he's, he's kind of my prodder to make sure I'm working it, if you know what I mean. I looked at him yesterday and I says, if this no longer becomes fun for me, 
I'm, I'm taking a couple days off. Anything that's going to take my peace away from me, I ain't doing. I get it. Y'all are all worked up. You, got, you guys are like nuts. I'm not getting like that. I'm going to keep my peace. See, I want to find joy, and my joy is in the Word of God. My joy is knowing and walking in what God has put before me right now. That's my joy. I'm not going to let anybody steal my joy by trying to distract me to tell me it's something else than that. No. Like I said, look at how much the Word of God's getting spread. Do you understand that wouldn't be happening if I wasn't doing what I was doing? I heard somebody tell me, hey, check out this video. Look at all the views it got. Do you know how many views uh, my sermon gets on an average? 10 to 20 a week. And that's half the folk that are here, because I know some rewatch it, and when they're not here, they watch it. What was the number you saw? Just a guess. A couple hundred. One video. I've got a thousand on one on Rumble. Over a thousand on one there. That's the point. The Word of God needs to go forth. And if I wasn't walking this path, it wouldn't be going out the way it's going. So again, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is where you find your peace. Don't let anyone steal your peace and joy with the distractions that they want to bring upon you. It says he thinks about his law day and night. Think about the Word of God day and night. Psalms 119.15. New King James Version says this, I will meditate on your precepts. Another version puts it this way, I will fix my mind on your instructions. Are you fixing your mind on the instructions of other people or are you fixing your mind on his instructions? Do you know everybody becomes a critic telling you how they think you ought to do things. I'm sure you find that in the workplace. I have found this in running a political campaign. Everybody's an expert in telling you what you ought to do and how to do and all this stuff. And I've literally had to look at somebody and say, um, maybe you might want to take some input from me because I'm actually the one here right now. I'm the one that actually like won the primary, didn't lose it. Just saying. But again, it's not a negative thing. I get it. I'm saying it the way this is saying it. Their mind is fixed over here. I need to keep my mind fixed in the word. Lord, this is your deal. This is your path you sent me on. I get it. But you know what, Lord? My mind must be fixed on you. I must meditate on your precepts, Lord, and contemplate your ways. Another version says, focus on your behavior, study your ways. Lord, I need to study your ways because your ways are not man's ways. Your thoughts are not man's thoughts. I need to focus on your ways. Doesn't mean you... you negate all that because the Bible clearly says there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. There is. But when you take all that wisdom and you put it all down, you say, okay, Lord, what is the direction I am now to proceed in? Is this making sense? Meditate on His precepts and contemplate. Think about His ways. Because his ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Psalms 119.27, this is God's word. Translation says this. Help me understand your guiding principles. Lord, help me to understand your guiding principles so that I may reflect on your miracles. Help me. And not only that, it, it, with this meditation, this is what you do, but you also want to get around those, as it says in Psalm 1, don't sit in the seat of the scoffers. Sit in the seat, get around other people that believe in you and want to help you and support you. Does that make sense? 
because I got one state rep that's just been such a blessing to me, it's incredible. I'll give you a little shout out, Tim. He's not a believer. And whenever I talk to him, he'll just call me up to see how I'm doing. Call me up the other day, just see, just checking on you, how you doing? Actually was out waving signs for me yesterday. When I wasn't there, we were doing our meeting at, at town hall yesterday morning and he's at the transport station with somebody else. Guy from Raymond. But he's a believer. And know what I love about him? He keeps telling me this. Jim, you got to do what God's telling you to do. That's what I'm saying. You need to get around people like that that are going to support you and say, you're going to hear all this stuff. Do what God's telling you to do. I'll just tell you this. When I first met him, when he ran for state rep, he's a state rep. God told him to do nothing. He said, go to the beach. That's what he did. That was his campaign. He went to the beach. Never knocked a door. Never made a phone call. Never did anything, anyone. So that's what I mean. He's talking from experience. He's saying, Jim, you got to listen to God. I listen to God and here I am. You got to listen to God, what he's telling you to do. That's what this is saying. Help me understand your guiding principles, Lord. You got to meditate on that, Lord. You truly are my guide. You are directing my path so that I may reflect on your miracles. God, you've done so many miracles in my life. Help me to know your ways so I know how you do these things so that I can walk in them and be a reflection of that to those I come in contact with. Now let me just kind of, we'll end with this one. I'm not even going to get into it this deeply right now, but this one kind of tweaks people out because anything that kind of looks like it's a little new age, people balk at. So don't do that, please. So you need to meditate, contemplate, think about the Word of God. Day and night, meditate on it. Stop thinking about all the junk going on. If you feel yourself losing your peace, getting upset, losing your joy, refocus back into the Word and let that one bapping in your ear, they're still going to be there. I told the kid I was with yesterday, I don't know how old he is, but I probably could be his father. I said, you know, all the stuff that I thought was earth-ending my whole life, guess what, I'm still here. It wasn't as devastating and earth-ending as I thought. And I even told him about Mary dying. I said, I'm still here and God blessed me with another awesome woman, been married for seven years. Everything we go through is not earth shattering and earth ending because God must be our foundation. He's our solid rock. It doesn't minimize what you go through, but at those times, day and night, when you think you're all alone and no one else is around and no one else cares, meditate on his goodness to you and the miracles that he's done in your life. So this next one is, imagine it. Now, let me define imagination for you. This is out of the dictionary too. It says this, the act or power of forming a mental image. Forming a mental image. That's the key phrase here. That's why I put it in bold. Forming a mental image of something not present to the senses or never before wholly perceived in reality. Form a mental picture. As Andrew Womack says in a lot of his teaching when he's talking about healing, see yourself well. Imagine it. Get a mental picture of you well. You know, you weren't always sick your whole life. There was a time when you were healthy. Go back and put that image back in your mind. Hey, I didn't have all these problems then. See yourself then. And then you say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Yes, I see myself whole and well now. This is part of the protocol. As we meditate on the word, as we think about it, then our thinking has to turn into the next step of imagining it. Let me give you a scripture before people get all wigged out. Genesis 15, 5 and 6 is a new translation, new living translation. Then the Lord took Abram outside. 
This is when God and Abram are having a conversation that Abram's an old man, he ain't got no kids, and God's telling him he's going to have more kids than he can imagine. How do you think that conversation went in Abram's mind? Yeah, right. God, you obviously don't know how this deal works. I won't even get into the physical issues of probably the situation that was going on with a man that age either. God, you just don't get it. So it says, And the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, Look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you'll have. Now, I don't know. We don't have that type of thing around here. I'm sure out in the desert where it's dark and there's no light pollution, I'm sure that sky was filled with thousands of stars. Easy. We don't, we don't kind of have that view in the place we're at in this hemisphere and what's around us to kind of actually understand what Abram was looking at at the time. But notice what verse says, 6 says. It says, and Abram believed the Lord. See, we've turned belief into just believing what we hear somebody tell us. Believing here involved God's word, like I've been telling you, meditating on its word, thinking about it, because he obviously had to change his thinking process because Abram is probably all kinds of full of doubt because he probably wasn't even physically able to have a kid. And he's old and his wife was real old, past childbearing age. So he had to meditate also on what he said. He had to change his thinking from his natural thinking into spiritual thinking, and then he had to imagine it. That's what God was saying. Look up and imagine. Look up and look at a reality that you cannot comprehend in the natural, is what he was telling Abram to do. See, this is where we, we lose it, right here. We can't even imagine ourselves if we've been in financial difficulty for so long we can't even imagine ourselves being out of it. If we've been in physical difficulty so long with a disease or, or whatever, we can't imagine ourselves even being out of it. And other things. Because we don't follow the protocol and we don't engage our imagination. Our imagination is a gate in our soul, man. No, it's the worst thing you could ever do to your kids crush their imagination. That's what we did growing up. Don't think like that. That's crazy. Little kid, what do you want to do when you grow up? I'm going to be the president. You can't be the president. What's the matter with you? You crushed his imagination or her imagination. You know, I want to do this or do that. No, you can't do that. Do you understand in the world in which we live, they constantly tell you what you can't do? They are constantly crushing the imagination, not just of the kids, of everybody. We've got to get back to the place where we imagine. Because when Abra Abram got the Word of God, meditated on the Word of God, imagined it, he actually had something he could physically see to imagine it, it said, then he believed the Lord. See, we want to jump from the Word of God to the belief in the Word of God, missing the two middle pieces. That's why it's not working for you. That's why you say, oh, I believe the Word of God. I believe that by His stripes I'm healed, but you've been sick for 20 years. You miss the meditating part, and you miss the seeing yourself that way. I told the kid yesterday that I was with, I know I blew his mind. I said, I don't know why you all wigged out. I won this race. I already won. How do you know? I know on the inside. I've already seen myself there. Then I told him about the dream Robin had. She's standing there holding my Bible in a dress that she knows while I'm getting sworn in. I've already seen the tag on my jacket. Following protocol. See, that's what wigs people out. People look at me like, you're nuts. No, this is developing your soul to be spiritual. Do you want to see the things of God come to pass in your life? You must take the Word of God. You must meditate on the Word of God. You must imagine it and seeing it as true. That's why the Bible says God calls those things that be not as though they are. 
It's just walking this out. And I know the kid probably thought I was nuts, but that was okay. Doesn't matter. That's what Abram did. That's what brings you to the belief part. Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to believe God. That's the next step after believing, walking it out in faith. And it goes on and it says, And the Lord counted to him, counted it to him as righteousness because of his faith. That's the next step. The Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Imagine it to be true. Believe it. Faith, and it says it was counted on Abram as righteousness. Genesis 24, 63. Isaac went out to the field to meditate. His servant went out to find him a bride. Know what he was doing? It says he went out to meditate in the field in the evening. Another version says here that I have, and he was, in, he was deep in thought. So while he was deep in thought, meditating on seeing his wife coming. It said, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and there the camels were coming. Know why you never see what you're praying for, asking for coming? You never imagine it to be true and actually occurring. This is a key principle in meditation that people don't get. You're looking for a new job or something. Imagine and see it coming to pass. And the devil's simply going to tell you, because I hear him saying it now, oh, you're lying to yourself. You're not lying to yourself. You're putting in a biblical principle into practice. You're developing your soul to be spiritual. In the natural, they say, yeah, you're crazy. You ain't want nothing. Yeah, in the natural, but I'm not looking at it in the natural. I'm looking at it in the spiritual. I'm walking a spiritual path because God's guiding my footsteps. Not y'all. God is. And again, I'm just using all this as an example. I'm trying to help you out to understand what I'm trying to share with you. I'm not just giving you random examples. I'm walking this out right now. Seeing it come to pass. So let me give you a takeaway. <clears throat> Here in uh, Mark 11, 22 and 24. Oh, and I see the time is getting away. Very familiar scripture. So many people have claimed this run with this and never see it come to pass and I'm just going to help you with a little blurb right at the end. Mark 11, 22 to 24 in the New Living Translation says this, And Jesus said to his disciples, Have faith in God. Or another version says, Have the God kind of faith. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. The religious person saying, You're nuts. That'll never happen. That's the problem. You can't see it happen. You can't imagine it happening. It says, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Do you know how many times I've had people say, I'm claiming this verse, I'm claiming this verse and nothing's happening. And nothing is happening because you're not following the proper protocol of the Spirit because you're functioning as a mere religious human being and trying to really use spiritual witchcraft to get what you want. The process is it needs to be based in the Word of God. Here's the Word of God. If you pray for anything, you'll get it. So stop saying it doesn't work because you already just shot yourself in the foot because it says don't doubt. If you believe, how do I get to that believing place? How did Abram get to that believing place? He had the word. He meditated on the word. He saw it coming to pass. He imagined it happening to the place that he could literally see it happening. And then it said he believed. And it was counted to him as righteousness because of his faith. See, people just go like this, oh, I'm believing really hard, I'm believing really hard. Because it says if you really believe and you squint your face and squint your fists, that's not really believing. 
We really believing is coming to the place where you see it happening. So let me just give you a little wrap up here at the end. Seeing the impossible happen in your life. You have to follow every one of these steps and not skip one. You got to read the word. And then you got to read the word out loud. And then you got to personalize the word that you read. And then you got to meditate, think about it day and night upon what you just personalized. You can't just sit there and say, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. No, Lord, I see myself being healed. I thank you that Jesus came and took a beating at the whipping post for my healing. You personalize it. And then you see yourself, imagine, see it coming to pass. See it actually real. I'm whole. I'm well. So you imagine what you personalize is now coming to pass. See it actually happening. You see it happening. That's how you see things come to pass. You personalize it. You speak it. That's what we're going to get to next. That The muttering, the murmuring, the uttering, the roaring, the low thunder. It's okay to get loud. Sometimes you got to get loud because there's so much noise going on that you have to override the noise where your brain's screaming, that's a lie, I don't believe that. You get loud because you believe what you say. So if you're going to develop your soul, you must learn how to meditate. We'll bring up a couple more principles but you got to think about it and you got to imagine it coming to pass for it to actually happen. That's the part people miss. They think because I said it, God's word is true, it's just going to magically happen. That's witchcraft. No, no, no. You see yourself in the place at the job you want, the physical condition you want, the financial condition you want, the position you want, whatever it is, you see it actually happening. You create a mental picture. I'll just end with this story. I used to do this when I was lost and I used to play softball and I'm sitting in the parking lot drinking beer before the game. I'm sitting there drinking beer, picturing myself up at bat and hitting a home run. Literally. And when I did that consistently, guarantee you in that game I hit a home run. Athletes do this all the time. Basketball players. There's a study of people, basketball players, that simply imagine themselves standing at the free throw line shooting free throws. They had a group that practiced like 10 minutes a day, another group that practiced one hour a day, and people that didn't do it at all just thought about it, and the people that thought about it were more accurate when it actually came to happening. We totally dismiss this aspect. See it come to pass. That's why it says, if you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, you actually see it happening. It'll happen. You've got to say it. Anything you ask in prayer, you'll receive. Not by clenching your fist in your face. Following this, God wears the word on it. You meditate on it day and night. Then you imagine it, you see it, make a mental picture of it occurring. If you just do those three things, your life's going to radically change right now. And we haven't even got even further into this. Just those three things will radically impact your life. I guarantee you within this next week, something's going to happen. God's going to show himself true to you. Father, thank you for this time. Your word. Lord, I don't even know what to say. You're, you're just so awesome. You're so amazing. You're so loving and kind and merciful and gracious. 
that, Lord, honestly, it boggles my mind at times because I know me, and I know you know me better than I know me. But, Lord, I praise you and honor you and thank you. I confess you as my Lord. I pledge my allegiance to you and only you right now, afresh and anew. I believe that Jesus raised from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, that you've called me and chosen me and put me on a path. And Lord, I pray that for all those that are in here this morning, all those that are watching. Because you're not a respecter of person. You don't show favoritism to any man. You have that all waiting for every person that will simply bow the knee to you, confess you as Lord, and walk with you. You want a relationship with us, Lord. Help us to develop a deeper relationship with you from this point forward that we can truly be that light on the hill, that salt of the earth, that epistle writ, uh, read by all men, that you would truly be honored and glorified in each one of our lives. We worship you and praise you now and thank you for all that's been done in your house today. In the name of Yeshua, amen and amen. Amen. God bless.